This is the second half of the Vesper Prezi, and this topic is bonding. There are actually two types of bonding that we're going to be looking at. There are actually others, but these are the two in this chapter that's, that are important. They are ionic, which of course is where electrons are transferred from one atom to the other. In an ionic bond, of course, the difference in electronegativity is very large. And so one atom gains electrons and one atom loses electrons. And therefore they form ions. That's one type of bonding. The one we've been focusing mostly on in this chapter, especially with the lab, is covalent bonding. Bonding in which something is shared. Electrons are shared between atoms. So instead of electron transfer, they keep their electrons and share with others to complete their octet. How well shared are those electrons? Well, they're either unevenly shared, and we call that a polar bond, or they are evenly shared, and we call that a nonpolar bond. So what we can do is we can figure out how well shared those electrons are. You can look at a table of electronegativities, and if you do, we're going to talk about bond polarity first. Um, if you look at the electronegativities of the two atoms in that particular bond, and you see that the difference in those electronegativities is zero, then that's a truly nonpolar covalent bond. If the difference in the electronegativities is greater than 1.7, in other words, a metal and a nonmetal usually, that means it's an ionic bond. No longer is there sharing happening one atom actually takes the electron from the other. And finally, if you have an electronegativity difference between 0 and 1.7, it's called a polar covalent bond. Again, these tend to be um, ones where there's sharing, but it's uneven sharing. Bond polarity is very interesting, but mostly we're interested in molecular polarity. What is that? that's if the bond polarities cancel, the molecule is nonpolar. So let's look at some examples and practice with um, polarity and shape of molecule. So I'm going to take my um, note paper here and I'm going to look at some examples. Let's look at CO2. Now in this molecule, of course, this has four. Um, valence, and this has 6 times 2, so that's 12, plus 4 is 16, or 8 dashes. When I do the molecule out, there's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And you can see that in this molecule, which is linear, This molecule is also nonpolar. Now, the bond between carbon and oxygen is polar because carbon and oxygen do not have the same desire to gain elect electrons. And if you look at your periodic table, you will notice that oxygen is more electronegative. And therefore, the electrons are going to be kind of going in this direction in that bond. This side will be the more positive side and the electrons will be more towards oxygen. Same is true with this bond right here. And the electrons in that bond are going to be going in that direction. And you can see, because they're 180 degrees apart, that if the oxygen on the right is pulling towards the right and the oxygen on the left is pulling towards the left and they have the same pull because they're the same atom, then those will cancel each other out and the molecule will be nonpolar. Mostly chemists are interested in the polarity of the molecule and not the bond. So there's really no need to look at a electronegativity chart. Let's look at another example of bonding. Sodium chloride. Sodium has a valence of one and chlorine has seven which makes eight or four dashes. So here's NaCl. And you might say, wait a minute. 
I thought that all atoms had to have four dashes. Remember, that's true for things that are covalent, as co carbon dioxide, the first example. This was covalent, and therefore we could say nonpolar. NaCl is actually an ionic bond. There is no sharing of electrons, so we can't discuss polar or nonpolar because they're not, they're not covalent. Only for covalent molecules can we say polar and nonpolar. Don't get confused or um, uh, feeling like you can say polar for NaCl because you see uh, an unevenness there. In fact, what happens is sodium loses an electron and chlorine gains an electron to become stable. These pictures, these Lewis diagrams, these dash diagrams that we do, do not really accommodate ionic bonding very well in terms of pictures. So although it might look like it could be um, a polar molecule, we don't talk about polar and nonpolar when something is ionic. So that's an example of um, a, a situation that's ionic and one that is uh, covalent. Let's look at this, which um, you should recognize. Hopefully you can, everyone's yelling ammonium because it's a polyatomic you're supposed to memorize. Now, ammonium is an ion. When the charge is listed, you, you have to put the, the um, molecule in a square bracket and put the charge outside. Sometimes it's not listed and it's part of a compound. Let me show you what I mean by that. So let's do this one. Um, nitrogen has five valence and hydrogen has four. So that makes nine. And then we subtract one because positive means, a positively charged means we are losing an electron. So that means we have eight or four dashes. And this one, of course, nitrogen's in the middle. And there we go. That means the positive with a square bracket means I have added that one, or in this case, subtracted the one um, electron that was lost, and therefore that's the molecular shape. So sometimes a polyatomic is part of a compound. For example, H3PO4, or phosphoric acid. So you can see that there is a polyatomic that's part of it. Now, let's think about how to put that together. Well, we have three here. Phosphorus has five. Oxygen has six times four, so 24 plus five plus three. Hmm. That's 32 divided by 2, which is 16 dashes. Oftentimes it's um, easier to put the polyatomic in the middle or together first. So here's P with its four O's. We know hydrogen never goes in the middle, so that's a little bit easier. So there's four, five, six, whoops, and in fact, before I start adding lone pairs, I should probably add those three hydrogens. I'll add one here, one here, and one here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. All right, there's that particular um, molecule. Let me move this because it looks hard to read. This thing has all kinds of central atoms, but if you had to um, name the centers, this one would be one, this one would be one, and this one would be one. All of those would have a bent shape. The phosphorus center would be tetrahedral. Clearly a polar molecule. It is not at all even. You notice I don't have to put this in a square bracket or put any charge outside. Even though it contains a polyatomic, it's not um, required because the entire molecule, as all molecules, have zero charge. The charge cancels, and that's what makes a molecule a molecule. So that kind of ends our discussion of shape and polarity.